Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to be playing Desert Tower Defense in the StarCraft II Arcade. The objective of this game is to survive for 60 waves without losing more than 20 lives. At the start of the game I recommend placing 4 siege tanks, or 5, up at the top left, and then if you didn't opt to go for a 5th siege tank, I recommend picking up a Marauder. The Marauder is useful because he can slow down units by 50% when he hits them, which can be really useful for certain types of waves. Okay, we have 150 Vespine. Once you reach 150, you want to pick up your first probe so that you can double your Vespine income. Then after that, we'll be investing our next 360 Vespine into drones so that we can boost our mineral income instead. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get a few more siege tanks. Pretty much just you want to fit as many siege tanks into the top left as you possibly can, because the spawn point has a built-in movement speed slow, so any t uh, splash tower that you put right here, the more effective it is. Because instead of hitting, let's say, two units, you're hitting five, <laughs> because they all spawn right on top of each other and they're slowed down significantly. We have a cloaked wave coming up, so that means it's time to pick up a detector. Personally, I like to go for the missile turret, but you also can go for the photon cannon, which has a massive detection range. The white circle outline you see here is the detection range, so you can cover your whole maze with pretty much one photon cannon. Alternatively, if you go the missile turret route, you will need about two or three. I usually do one here, one here, and then a couple over here. And yeah, because siege tanks are ground only, having anti-air turrets is just a good thing to have in general. I'm also going to pick up one spore crawler. It's worth mentioning that a spore crawler is not a detector in this game, unlike in the base version of StarCraft II. However, the spore crawler is splash damage for air units, which is why it's quite useful. Okay, 120 Vespine means it's time to pick up our first drone. Probably a good idea to get a couple of extra siege tanks as well. In reality, due to the high range, they were definitely going to handle that, but yeah. Phasing in more siege tanks over time is a really good way to prevent any accidental life loss. Instead of, there is an option for instead of getting more siege tanks, you can instead upgrade one siege tank, and we will eventually be doing this just because we'll fill up so many spots on the map that there won't really be any left, but at the start of the game, you're really much better off building multiple siege tanks because that will give you more coverage and it means they can get multiple attacks off and the cooldown sooner and that sort of thing. Whereas if you invest it all in one and it's not in range, you're missing out on a lot. Should be able to get our next drone in about 20 to 30 seconds here. Also going to squeeze in a few more Marauders right now. As far as Marauders go, pretty much the more you have, the better your maze will do, so just try to squeeze in as many as you possibly can. The same thing also applies to Roaches. They accomplish a very similar goal, but you in fact need even more Roaches than you need for Marauders. Because Marauders will eventually have an upgrade that makes their uh, the slow a splash effect. So it'll make, in a very small radius, all the units get slowed by 50%. Whereas for the Roach, they're permanently single target. If you want to get that extra slow, you just need tons of them. Usually I end up getting like 15 Marauders and 15 Roaches. And it almost always works out favorably, just because with Siege Tanks, they attack so slowly that you really need that extra maze time. Not enough minerals. Yeah, a little bit slow on this one. Could have got that drone like 20, 30 seconds ago. But not a huge loss. You only get 18 minerals a minute per drone, so I guess I'm behind 9 minerals. Not gonna make or break the game. Okay, Reapers should be a non issue. Yeah, I do recommend keeping an eye on the next level. Because sometimes if you see a flying wave that you know will usually be problematic, it's a good signal that you should start to upgrade your spore crawler. I don't actually recommend upgrading missile turrets. It's not bad, but you really get a lot more out of spore crawler upgrades because they're splash. 
Okay, let's incorporate a couple of Hellions here. Hellions are useful against light waves like we're facing right now. For as far as Hellion placement goes, you want to place it at the end of a vertical straight or horizontal straight because that's how the Hellion targeting system works. Squeezing in a few extra Siege Tanks. Surprisingly, hmm, pretty unfortunate there. The Siege Tank's automatic targeting focused on the new wave instead of the existing wave, which is why so many of the Reapers were able to sneak through. Not a big deal. Uh, we do have 20 lives, so losing 6 will be fine. But yeah, pretty unfortunate. We should have lost 0, but oh well. semi-powerful airwave here, which is why I invested a couple of points into upgrading my spore crawler. Now you can kind of see the effect of the splash. Okay, time for our third and final drone. And now, every time we reach 150 Vespine, we'll be investing it into a new probe. It's also very important that you switch your rally point from the mineral patch to the gas patch. Let's get another couple of Marauders over here and some Roaches. There we go. Yeah, and, yeah. I just really like to distribute those Roaches pretty much as much as possible. Now the units are moving significantly more slowly. We'll be able to get our next probe in a moment here. Also, once you finish your third drone, that's usually a pretty good sign. You can start to invest a lot of minerals into one single tower if you want to. But I'll be giving it a few more minutes before then, because we'll, we're not quite at the phase of the game yet where there's no benefit from making basic towers. Observer wave looks like they're pretty clustered up at the moment, which means our spore crawlers are going to be really effective. So I don't think we need to invest any more into towers just yet. I'm gonna work in some immortals here. This is pretty optional. Immortals. Immortals are a decent unit against massive units, which uh, are little boss units that can sometimes be problematic since siege tanks are specialized for single target. Or specialized for splash instead of single target. Another Hellion right here and a Hellion here. Then we'll get two Hellions up here, and that's going to be it for the Hellions. 120, getting pretty close to our next probe. Okay, put a couple of siege tanks on the left. Then we're going to get as many siege tanks as possible in the top left, because as I said, this is really where you get a ton of return on investment. Technically, you could also put your upgraded siege tank up here as well, and it would work out pretty nicely. Maybe I'll give that a go and mix it up. So instead of having a level 3 siege tank right here, we put a level 7 siege tank or whatever right here, which would allow it to attack the entrance. Yeah, why not? I think it will work out nicely because of the exact reason I mentioned earlier with the clustering. Let's get a spore crawler upgrade and a attack speed upgrade. You know what, let's get one more spore crawler upgrade. Don't want to risk any lives here. Lost a couple earlier due to a mistake. Yeah, with those extra spore crawler update upgrades, he's now absolutely melting the clusters of air units. Ah, the classic supercharged single unit. This is where those Marauders and Roaches come in handy. Fell behind on the probe a lot, got a little sidetracked there, but one probe, not a huge deal. Get that final probe in a moment. And there we go. We now don't have to worry about creating any more probes or drones, which is nice. So now we're going to create a engineering bay from our advanced structures menu. 
From here, we want to get specifically the Concussive Shatter, Revamped Reloading, ISEC Auto Tracking, Severe Corruption, and Groove Spines. Pretty much all of those will probably make sense uh, right away, except for Groove Spines. Eventually, we're going to be making a Hydralis Tower, but we don't have that just yet. 60 Zealots, yeah. I think we need to invest in Siege Tanks at the moment, more so than Anti-Air, because we, I did just put a ton into a Spore Crawler. A couple of little Broodlings are sneaking out over here, so let me pause the upgrade for a second. Okay, Siege Tank level 5, we're up to 210 damage. Zealots currently have 170 HP. Actually, well, that's a little deceptive. We have 135 damage and 210 versus armored, but Zealots aren't armored. Hmm. I think we have enough power to take out the Corruptors thanks to the Spore Crawler, but I'll keep a close eye on it. I'm going to move my... You know what? Pretty sure we don't need these, but I'm still going to get a couple extra missile turrets just in case. Yeah, we didn't need it, but it will be useful later on. Okay, Concussive Shatter is now researching. And you'll see the effect of that in the group units, where basically now every single unit will be slowed. We can also pick up... We're doing pretty well on air for the moment, so let's go ahead and save for revamped reloading because we want to juice up the siege tanks. Let's get an extra roach here, extra marauder, another extra marauder, another extra marauder. <laughs> Alright, that looks pretty good. Advanced or revamped reloading is up, which will reduce the base attack time from 6 seconds to 5. This will, of course, technically reduce the amount of attack speed in the green, but that's just because the, with the base lower, the percentage reduction will be lower as well. Okay, in one moment here, we'll be improving the roaches. I do see another air wave coming up. Do I need to invest into an improved spore crawler? Is it too greedy for me to wait? Is the question really? Uh. All right. Let's see the first hit, and if it seems like it's just an absolute pea shooter, we'll immediately get an upgrade. Okay. I yeah, it's probably a good idea for an upgrade. Yeah, okay. Spore Crawler should have that covered. And basically, whenever you see the green glow on a unit, that means that's being slowed by the roaches. So you can really see the effect of having however many we have. What is that, like 15 roaches or something? Okay, in a moment here, we'll be getting our next Siege Tank upgrade. Siege Tank now does 279 to all units and 434 to armor units. So yeah, not quite enough to one-shot these High Templars, but still very good. Okay, next up is High Sec Auto Tracking. And we can just get the Acid Spores. It's going to be a while before we have a Hydralisk running, so we can just save the money for the moment. But these guys are really zipping through the maze. Somehow they must have dodged some of the Marauders, which really does not seem possible. <laughs> there are so many Marauders here. Okay, a couple of leaks might end up happening. Uh, seems like... Two, four, five, six-ish. Gonna take us down to seven. Guess we can squeeze in a couple more Siege Tanks over here. The sentry getting through was pretty much expected, though, so not a huge loss on that one. Okay, seven lives remaining. We're on level 40 of 60, so it's all going to come down to how we manage for the final few waves. I think we'll manage. Because with the final few upgrades, it really gets your units into a point where now it's one-shotting the packs instead of two-shotting or whatever, and that's the little push you need 
to be strong enough to effortlessly take out the final waves. Groove Spines still a little ways away. To explain why Groove Spines is so valuable, Hydralisks have a slightly better attack time than the Marines, slightly better base range, and they also do bonus damage to light units. So as long as you get that Groove Spine upgrade, they're just objectively better than Marines. Marines have a Stim Pack upgrade, but Stim Pack kind of sucks, because for Stim Pack to work, you have to invest money into Medivacs to heal the Marine. And yeah, that's just a lot of tedium, so not a huge fan of Marines. Seems like we're doing reasonably well against the durable broodlings. Yeah, getting that final damage upgrade here would be quite nice. Just need to do a little extra focus fire with this siege tank. Don't want any of these guys to sneak through. Good. Only five minerals away. There we go. Siege tank is now up to 567 damage or 882 against armored units, so he's able to completely one-shot these level 44 siege tanks, which is unbelievable. Alright, we've got every single major upgrade out of this shop, which means we're now going to start investing our Vespeen. Uh, well, one second here, let me get a few more anti-air turrets up. A few more on top of that, perhaps. Uh, let's just do a little bit of focus fire. That should be enough to get us through here. Okay, there we go. Save some minerals. Uh, okay. Yeah, so what we're going to be investing our Vespine on now is the Warp Prism. Very important that you get any superpower towers within the range of the Warp Prism. Or rather, the Warp Prism turns them into superpower towers. So I'm going to start by getting the channel range upgrade to get the Hydra able to attack any unit. This placement of the Hydra specifically is good if you get the range upgrade. By default, <laughs> this isn't the best spot for the Hydra because it won't grab the top, but with the range, it easily grabs the top. Siege tank range is so massive that an extra two is not a huge deal, but still nice either way. couple of speed upgrades here and yeah and the next upgrade we'll be getting from the warp prism is going to be the damage upgrade and that requires 500 vespine so we're really going to be getting that right before the game ends and yeah that one really is only good for the hydra well it'll give us about 90 bonus damage which is solid but our base damage is so high it's not a huge deal on the siege tank whereas it's pretty massive for the hydra Alright, really good that we squeezed in that one extra hit there with our um, primary siege tank. Oh yeah, the research I got for the spore crawler earlier allows us to toggle the spore crawler's damage effectiveness between light and armored. So if you keep an eye on the type of air waves that you're facing, that can be a good way to squeeze in 90 bonus damage. You could also skip that though if you just don't care about that bonus then you can invest that 100 into getting channel damage slightly earlier, which isn't a bad idea. Yeah, most of our minerals right now are just going to continue to be funneled into the Hydra. We're up to 93 damage at the moment. And Marauders are armored, which means our siege tanks are doing bonus damage. Yeah, this is when the siege tank is just absolutely fantastic. We have like 40, well not 40, like 10 plus units clustered up, and every single one gets hit by the siege. And we're just about to get channel damage. So keep an eye on the Hydralisk's bonus. So right now it's plus 93. Pick up channel damage, and now it is plus 125. The Hydra's not even fully maxed out yet. Yeah, so we got about 30 to 40 damage there. Hey, Broodlords, these are our armored units, so I'm going to go ahead and switch my Spore Crawlers to armored mode. 
which will get that extra 100 damage. The thing I'm noticing is that... Hmm. Maybe I... Oh, I see. I'm observing that the Spore Crawler... Just check something. Two, two. The Spore Crawler somehow ended up ge being under the effect of the Warp Prism, even though the Blue Grid is very inaccurate. So perhaps the Blue Grid doesn't actually relate to the Damage Boost region. Which is odd, but I guess it's possible. How far does that reach? Okay. Nice. It's good to know. So basically, if you get the Warp Prism, you actually have quite a bit more space to work with than I initially thought, but uh, the true range is not specified, so just keep that in mind. If you want it to be guaranteed on your tower, you should place it within a few blocks. So let's see, four out, five out... Kind of seems like it's a about a four tower square, but probably a circle since most things in StarCraft 2 are circular for the range. Same for Warcraft 3 as well. Okay, let's get the final upgrade in the Warp Prism here, giving us 10% extra attack speed. And the final wave is going to be 60 Corruptors, which means we should probably invest that money, if we somehow get enough, into the damage on the Spore Crawler. If not, we can do some... Not really emergency per se, but just some extra upgrades on the missile turrets or spore crawlers. Yeah, we're not going to get enough, so let's put the money into these spore crawlers. Okay, yeah, might as well have just invested that. So, let's take a look. Seems like we have plenty of anti-air DPS thanks to the... Yeah, thanks to the spore crawlers mostly. And that means we're going to be successful. So that is 60 rounds of Desert Survival TD. And yeah, so if you guys like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to play some games with me, I do a live stream every Saturday. And I recommend checking out this tower defense if you like fairly challenging tower defense games. Even though this may have seemed relatively easy with this video, you probably will find it's quite a bit harder than it initially appeared. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.